Michael Shamus, Brent Reid, and welcome back. I'm back. I'm back, baby. You are back. You've... I am. Where have you been? Coaching the Warriors. Six weeks. <laughs> welcome back, Great baby. Job, and I get it. <laughs> it's funny. Yes, every time the Warriors have a good win, I get a slew of text messages from people saying, well done. <laughs> I think he gets Andrew Webster, the coach, not the gibbering Where a text message, what, as in... Well done. Yeah, right, yeah. OK. Take it. Take I the will. compliments take while it. you can. Yeah, exactly. um, all right, well, let's get stuck in. First off, uh, the Dragons, Ben Hunt. Did he overstep the mark with his comments about his future? I want to say what he said because he was asked um, if, Griff if Griffin was to go, uh, if you bring in a new coach to start again, he says he's not really keen on starting again and asked if Griffin's sacking uh, would cause him to reconsider. He said you would definitely have a think about it and reassess. I thought it was a little bit too far. I think it's admirable that... Um, he was sticking up for his mate and his coach, Anthony Griffin. Um, to me, there was a few things to take out of it. One, it just shows you how much of a joke the NRL contract system is when a player can talk about actively breaking his contract if he doesn't get what he wants with two years to run on his deal. And the other thing is he's entitled to his opinion. I just hope the Dragons don't listen to him because it might be good for Ben Hunt for Anthony Griffin to be there for the next two years, but it's certainly not for the Dragons, unless they start winning some games of football. Yeah, I admire his loyalty, but ultimately it's not his decision. And it should have nothing to do with Ben Hunt. It, 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 Anthony Griffin's future will be dictated by results and results alone. Now, Ben Hunt can play a role in that, right, by help, helping them win footy games. That's the best thing he can do for Anthony Griffin. But ultimately, coming out publicly, which he's done a few times now, it's not the first time he's come out and publicly defended Anthony Griffin. Do it one, I don't want him doing it once, right? But he's done it about three times now. It's just... It's just gone a bit far for me as captain of the club. He should be worried about winning footy games, not worried about who's coaching that footy team. In fairness to him, he's getting, he's he's getting, asked, he's the getting asked about well, it. You don't have to answer it. Yeah, well, you don't on. have to. Then you'd be here sitting today bagging him for not, for not answering the question. I don't he have an issue with him answering the question. He could simply say, I've said before, I support Anthony Griffin. Yeah. And there's no issue I with him supporting Anthony Griffin, as you'd expect him but to do. But you know what they... journos do. They, we love to go back and ask more <laughs> and questions. Re reframe and the exactly, question, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've got no issue with him saying it twice, three times, that he wants to back the coach. I'm with Webby, though. Back the coach, but not at the expense of the club. What does it say to the fans who, yeah, who live and bleed, bleed the club? They love rugby league. They love the team. They've been so frustrated by the way the team's performed. Then your leader, the captain of the club, sitting there saying, yeah, I might reassess my options if my old mate's gone. Like, it it's doesn't... realistic anyway, Mick. I mean, he's on what? so much money. To break that contract and go find another club next year so at the age of 33 or whatever it is... Do you think he's not just saying that, though, to keep Griffin safe? Well, that's where he's job. overstepped he's... the mark. That's where he has. By all means, back Anthony Griffin, say he's the right coach for us. But then to say, if he's not the coach, then I'm going to look elsewhere or look... Yeah, consider going elsewhere. It's not... A, it's, you're the leader of the club. You're the captain of the team. You've got to put the club and the team first. But then you want to have players to have their say on things. Otherwise, if he says nothing... We hate it in rugby league where, where players... He didn't say nothing. The, He's back to coach. The, yeah, but when players toe the line and say, oh, I don't want to comment on that or oh, you, you've, I've already spoken about it, it, you want players to be able to speak their mind. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't disagree that he has a, a right to tell the Dragons. He has a right to tell the Dragons privately that... I believe he's the right coach and I'm frustrated if you're going to go a different direction. But to say it publicly when you've got a role as the captain, I don't think that's the right decision. Um, all right, well, what about for the Dragons? Who is the answer? Uh, well, I th for me, I'd go with Shane Flanagan. I think he's won premierships. He knows the footy club. He's been on the staff. I think he played there as well at some point, Flanagan, didn't he, from memory, really early on in his career. I'm not sure I could be wrong there. But, um, you know, he knows the footy club well. He knows the salary cap well. He's a proven premiership winner. Um, you know, it's obviously a decision for next year. I mean, you're not going to get Flano now to come mid-year because he's locked in at Manly with uh, Anthony Seabold. But I don't think Jason Rolls will go there. And he's the logical one. So if you can't get Rollsy, I think then Flano's the next guy in line for me. I agree. Look, I... No, no, I don't agree with Flanagan. Um, oh. but, I, but I agree with Rolls. So I thought you agreed with me for a second. Only then. for a moment. But yeah. I'll take, I'll take, I'll take Rolls any day of the week. I think you're right. I don't think you'll go there. Um, if not Rolls, I do like the idea of Dean Young, Ben Hornby coming back to the club. They've had experiences... As joint and coaches. As, as joint coaches. They've been assistant oh, coaches. Well, they, they did it in under-20s. <laughs> under well, it's a bit different than the NRL. Oh, no, no, of course it is. But I'd like... Can I finish what I'm saying? <laughs> sure. What is it? It's been four minutes. I'm sick of you already. <laughs> um, I like the idea of them coming back. But on the proviso that the Dragons get ahead of football. Mm. If there is one club screaming out for a head of football, 
it's the Dragons. And I know that they've talked about it, uh, about options in the past. Shane Richardson's name's been linked to it. There's plenty of other people who would be good in that role. But I think they, that is a fundamental thing that that club needs. Who, who would you have... I'd get Richo if they it. could. Yeah, yeah I think Richo would do you it. Know, for, yeah, I think he's perfect as in a head of football role. But, you know, like a Peter Parr or a Frank Panisi mm -hmm. or someone with that, you know, that those, those decades of knowledge in the game who also understands pathways and how they can get the Dragons going in the right direction. Because at the moment, they're not... They seem to be leaking juniors and they don't seem to be making finals. So that's very unlike the Red V yeah. that I know and well, love. I'm going to sit, like, <laughs> sit here and say which coach should be because... Let's be fair, there are, there are guys in the game who are paid to understand who are the best coaches You're paid are. paid to tell us who you think should, should, yeah, but what the coach would I know? should be. What would I know about who the coach You, you know, know what? You exactly. What things. would you know? <laughs> what would I know? I'm going to save that. I'm going to clip that up and just play it again. <laughs> we all we hold different, hear different things about who the good coaches are, but reality is we've never been coached a day in our lives by any of these guys. And the, what it does show to me, though, is that this process is the right process because there is no clear-cut answer for what the Dragons need going forward. But what they do have now is time over the next four, six, eight, ten weeks to do their homework do it, yeah. on all those guys to make sure and speak to people unlike people like me and find out what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are and will they fit in with what the club's trying to do. You can, you can bag the Dragons as much as you like, but the Tigers... Sorry to harp on the Tigers, but they ended up with Tim Sheen's Benji because their plan A didn't work, Cameron Seraldo. So they, didn't, ha they haven't, didn't have any time to do their due diligence on anyone else. They wanted Cameron Seraldo, they went after Cameron Seraldo, they missed out. They didn't have a plan B, C and D. The Dragons will, though. If Jason Riles is their plan A and they miss out on Jason Riles, they know about the next two, three guys in line so they can make the right decision, not just make the decision like last time, I, Anthony Griffin, who was just the no, best of the rest at well, the time. Well, exactly, and they weren't entirely sold on, on Hook either that day um, that they appointed him. They were looking at other options up until the last minute. I, I agree, look... Uh, the. Some people, they've been criticised the club for uh, telling Anthony Griffin early on that, you know, they're going to look at other options. I think it's rare for a club to knife someone in the front than the back in rugby league. But um, I, I think a big part of this is because of the contract system with players. Because you need yeah, to right. work 18 months in advance on who your cut players are, but you're not going to get players to the club if they don't know who the coach is. So, as a consequence, clubs have to work 18 months in advance in this godforsaken transfer system that the RLPA think is working wonderfully, but it's not. Uh, all right, well, let's move on. Let's talk um, a little bit about the Canberra Raiders. Uh, heat on Ricky Stewart. Is there heat on him considering the performances? And if there isn't, then should there be more? Everyone thinks Ricky's a protected species in the media because he's got mates in the media. Um, look, he can be feisty, I've noticed. I understand. Um, but if not Ricky Stewart, then who at Canberra? Like, and I think this, I think this is a really important uh, game for them this afternoon against Canberra. There was a, such a, it's such a, a big, it's such a Canberra thing to beat Brisbane without all those players last week, without the likes of Whiten and, and Tarpany. But th I can see this is the match that they'll probably drop against the Dragons, even though they have those players coming back. And that's the issue with the Raiders. They've been a little bit too inconsistent. But if not Ricky, then who? Is, is, is it fair to say, Webby, I know you touched on that he's protected species because of his friends in the media, but he also has very strong ties to people within the club, though, as well. Do you think that is a factor in all this as well? You, are, you answer that. You answer what, your own question. You, 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 you answer look, it. The, 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 yeah, I'm going to throw that ball back to you. But Don Ferner, the CEO of the club, he did sack his, his brother once before. He, he, they moved on David Ferner. I wonder how much loyalty... You know, at what point does that loyalty run out for, for Ricky Stewart and the Raiders? Ricky, I think Ricky's earned extra loyalty, not just because of what he's done at that footy club. I, mean, I think they've played finals three of the past six years, maybe. It's not as if he's got a bad record. And what he does in the community down there um, earns him extra gravitas yeah, as well because he's such, a, yeah. he's such a big part of that, that town, you, imagine if he that wasn't place. There. Imagine if he wasn't there. If you took him out of, the, out of Canberra now, exactly. like the place strong, would almost fall apart. Yeah, and he's a strong leader. He's a he's yeah. a strong leader who you know he's uh, in control of every aspect of of that club. Yes. But yeah, he he knows how to handle the media. He knows how to handle certain players. Yeah. He 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 does have he a, brings it all together. He, he does have a, a, a cocoon wrapped around him in the media to an extent, right? He's, he's got loyal allies in the allies in the media. But every coach does. Mm. Every coach has got allies in the media. What's more important for Ricky is the allies he's got in Canberra and, and, and his record down there. I mean, people bag him 
for the way they're going this year. But their record in recent years hasn't been that bad. Yeah. You can't compare it's been very him. Inconsistent, it's yeah, been inconsistent, though. It's been inconsistent, but you can't compare him to okay, coaches no, at the they West. Made the finals. They, yeah, they scraped you can't nice compare him to I coaches. Feel, I feel other teams have been a lot more a lot, inconsistent. You can't compare yeah. him to the West Tigers. Ti coaches of the West Tigers haven't played finals footy in a decade. been there? Eight years? Seven years? He's been there a long time. We're not talking about a guy who's only had three or four cracks. He made the grand final. He's done a good job. I'm not saying he needs to be moved on. I'm just saying the, the, the heat that's on him, I think it's justified. They've been inconsistent. I'm not saying I, sack the I, guy. I'm I do like it. Some, another journo said to me, why don't, you get rip, why don't you get stuck into Ricky? You, you're too close to him. I said, why don't you? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard to do. He's, a, he's, as I said, a feisty character, but he's a, you know, he's a, he's a, he deserves some, some leeway down there. Yeah. Mm. Um, all right, Nico Hines, Jerome Luai, who wins the battle for New South Wales number six? Can we call Freddie in? Just, just <laughs> Luai? Luai. Don't sit in the fence again, man. You've got to pick someone. Yeah, stop asking, uh, us, stop asking <laughs> us questions. Yeah, that's when did that, when did that <laughs> happen? Where that you ask, just where you ask us qu questions? I like questions. laughing in the back. You're talking about maybe like, I, I think Jerome's... Jerome's still the front runner. Like if, if I'm picking the team, I think the way he performed in Origin over the last few years and his combination with those guys, I don't think he's should be dethroned yet. There's six weeks to go, five weeks to go till the team is picked. Nico's had a couple of good games and they've if lost he continues few, to they've do lost that. a few series in the last few years. Yeah. So they have. loyalty comes with winning. It doesn't come with losing. So I don't think Freddie O's <coughs> excuse <coughs> me, Freddie O's Jerome You spoke about loyalty. leeway. You spoke about leeway has has it's with, with Ricky, has Jerome earned any leeway with the fact that he has that combination with those guys who are going to no. be in pivotal they haven't positions? Won. They haven't won. Yeah. So, so, you, so Nick goes your sixth then? Yes, right now, today, yes. Yeah. Webby? I, like, I, I agree with Chamis. That's twice today we've agreed. Wow. <laughs> I, 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 I You're a different man. You've come back a I, different man. I also man. think, well, hang on. Change, I, I, well, man. If we're picking it today, He's I pick coach Jerome. Now, mate. He's a coach. If we're picking t the team today, I pick Jerome. But I like to see the form of both players closer to Good. the... Selection well, time. you can't get them both in there unless Nico's on your bench. Jerome's not on your bench. If he's not your six, yeah. mm. but you can get Nico in. You know what I like about then? Jerome, though, from a New South Wales point of view? He gets under their skin. Mm. You like he's a niggly little. I like. I, like I don't like a grub. I like, but I like a niggler. You know they lost last year, right? Well, they won bef the year before that. You remember what about that the bit? year before that? Well, they lost. Spot, spot the, Queen. spot the okay. Queenslander on the bench. <laughs> but also, too, you have to <laughs> weigh into. It comes into calculation his partnership with Nathan Cleary. They're playing week in, week out as well. Last year. Oh, listen to you. I'm just right, saying. Well, I know, um, we all we know what happened last year. You don't have to okay. say it eight times. You know what happened last year? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so last year. Right, I, I was just going to say, who's the Queensland fullback? Yeah, exactly. Callum Ponga. Rhys Walsh. Callum Ponga's fit. It's got to be Callum does, Ponga. Where does, does Rhys fit in at all? Doesn't, doesn't make the team. Doesn't make the team. I don't know. I want to see a Callum playing football before I pick him in origin. No, as long as he comes back. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wouldn't pick him without a game under his Why belt. Are you so angry. I know he's angry. I don't Spencer, like it when you two agree. Spencer <laughs> bullying me. Duster, he thinks he runs the joint now. Oh, how good was it? Um, Reese Walsh or Caelan Ponga for you? For oh, I like want to see how Caelan bounces back, to be honest. But Reese Walsh is pretty, pretty fierce at the moment, isn't he? Mm. Hmm. I'm going to sit on the fence. Oh, no, you can't wow. sit on the fence. You've got to decide. No, I think. Well, right now, Reese Walsh is your fullback, but it's he's he's been the form player of the competition over the first six weeks of the year, and. You can't ignore that. But Caelan Ponga could come back and change minds. Right now, it's Reese Walsh. Yep, all right. Well, we'll have to see what Caelan Ponga does when he takes on the Cowboys this coming week. Looking forward to seeing him back in action.